Welcome everyone. So, in the previous lecture we had posed the problem of filtering. If you recall the problem was that we were uh, there was a, a, a the state of a system denoted x k which we wanted to estimate using observations y 1 to y k of the system. So, we were we uh, the state of the system evolved in this as a Markov chain. So, x k plus 1 given x k in this sort of uh, is in this sort of form the the observations were uh, we had observations y k which we received at each time k which whose density was given by p of y k given x k. And then using the observations uh, up until a certain time let us say it was denoted y 1 n here is denotes the observations from y uh, from time 1 till time n we had to we had to use that to estimate x k. The case of filtering was when k was equal to n that means the time instant at which we are we are we receive our latest observation is the time instant where uh, for which we also want to estimate the state. And uh, so, this the x hat k given k which was which was basically the conditional expectation of of x k given y 1 to y k this is uh, this is what uh, the problem of estimate of finding this is uh, was filtering. Now, this in turn uh, required us to compute compute this density which is the probability density of x of uh, probability density of x k given y 1 to y k. So, we said the problem of filtering is really to recom is to compute this this pi k of x which is probability of x k equal to x given y 1 to y k. Uh, it, the problem of filtering is to compute this recursively right. So, in other words we needed a function t such that we which mapped the previous the previous density uh, the, the previous density like this uh, which was uh, which is pi k minus 1 and the new observation that we received which is y k and map that to a new density pi k. Now, if you recall this pi uh, this uh, this density here pi k is all was also called the posterior density I had written this term out here posterior density. So, the problem of filtering was really about computing this posterior in a recursive manner right. So, so let us now write out the main theorem of filtering uh, the main theorem on which the logic of filtering is based. So, filtering essentially relies on this one simple theorem. So, consider the model above. consider the above model which means your state evolves as p of x k plus 1 given x k this is the state density state transition density and then we have p of y k given if you recall here we have p of y k given x k as the observation density Now, we are from here we are asking okay, what is pi k plus uh, pi k plus 1 we write it here pi k plus 1 of x k plus 1 which is p of x k plus 1 given y 1 to y k plus 1 satisfies the following recursion. So, by k plus 1 of x k plus 1 is t of pi k comma y k plus 1 
and is equal to by is which is equal to this p y k plus 1 given x k plus 1 times the integral over x of p of x k plus 1 given x k times the previous uh, density that we had which is pi k of x k the integral is with respect to x k. So, it is d x k here divided by now here we are we have two integrals there is an integral here y k plus 1 given x k plus 1 this integral times. So, the integral of this times the same thing that is there in the numerator which is p x k plus 1 given x k pi k of x k d x k and the outer integral is with respect to d with respect to x k plus 1. So, this here this this particular formula here is the filtering recursion. So, it is what gives us as it is what takes as input here this the previous density the density at the previous time step that is what is written out here. The new observation that we have received that is what is coming here and if you see all the other variables involved have been integrated over right. So, the uh, so uh, the uh, the the other uh, the other variable involved is x k. So, that has been integrated over this ends this new density is being evaluated at x k plus 1. So, that is why there is an x k plus 1 here in the numerator. So, after all of this is done what we are left with is a function of x k plus 1 and uh, uh, and the uh, observations y 1 to y k plus 1 and that is what is this particular density here. So, how does one prove this? Well, the proof of this is rather simple and uh, so let me let me highlight quickly run you through the proof of this. The proof is so first uh, we, we really have to only use the definition of of the posterior conditional density. Uh, so, so that is remember this. Uh, so, so, really we have pi k plus 1 of x k plus 1 is nothing but p x k plus 1 the joint joint density of p x k plus 1 and y 1 to y k plus 1 divided by the marginal density of y 1 to y k plus 1. And this in turn can be written in, a, in the following way. So, this here can be written as it's I will write this on the next page. So, this can be written as p y k plus 1. Now, since I have here what I will do is in if I since I have in the numerator y 1 to y k plus 1 and uh, x x k plus 1. I can write this as y k plus 1 given all the other variables times the density of those other variables. So, you would have y k plus 1 given x k plus 1 comma y k plus 1 times the density of the other variables. The other variables are is so the other variables are really these. So, whatever are we con whatever it is that we are conditioning on it is p x k plus 1 comma y 1 to k here, but this this particular term here can be written in a better way. What we can do is we can uh, we can in fact include an, a th another term here which is what I will do now. So, I will also take the density of along with this of x k and then put in a y 1 to y k and then integrate this over x k. Now, what is the advantage of doing that? So, this is my numerator. 
the uh, I, I, I can write out a similar term in the denominator by the denominator is simply the integral of the numerator with respect to x k plus 1. So, what I will do is I will just repeat the same term here and then also integrate the numerator and integrate also separately with respect to x k plus 1. So, I, I have Now, what is the numerator here? Let's let's uh, let's focus a bit uh, more closely on this term here. This term, this is this density. This is the joint density of x k plus one, x k, and y one to y k. So I can now write this in the following way. So let me just pull out this particular term and write that separately. So this density, x k plus one, x k, y one to y k. This here is equal to uh, the probability of x k plus 1 given x k and y 1 to y k times probability of x k and y 1 to y k. Now, this and this in particular further can be simply uh, we can we can now simplify this further. So, the, the way to uh, way to do that is to observe that if you that this particular density here, this is just the probability of the state be transitioning from x k to x k plus 1 ok. Condition given that you are at state x k the probability that you are at the next time step at x k plus 1 given also that given also the observations up until y 1 to y k. Now, given the, sta the state transition from x k to uh, uh, for, uh, given the state transition really the probability of uh, the, the this this prob this particular probability does not any more depend on on y 1 to y k. So, you would gain no further information from uh, from y 1 to y k once you have already given x k as far as the transition uh, transitioning to the state x k plus 1 is concerned. So, consequently this here the first term here just becomes p of x k plus 1 given x k. The the uh, and then you have the second term which is p x k comma y 1 to y k. Now, p x k comma y 1 to y k itself has uh, can be uh, can be further simplified p x k comma y 1 to y k is Okay. Now, p x k comma y 1 to y k can be further simplified. We can write this in fact as, so I have my first term here and then I can write this as pi k of x k times the probability of y 1 to y k. And what is pi k of x k? Remember pi k of x k was, uh, pi k of x k was simply probability of x k given y 1 to y k, right. So, this that is what we get here. This now this probability of y 1 to y k is going to be there in the numerator. It is also going to be present when we do a similar expression here in the denominator. So, as a result of that it, it actually cancels out and uh, and when once we substitute this uh, substitute for uh, for this term here 
in in this expression as well as in this expression. So, as a consequence of this, so p, uh, we can write out the above expression as follows so that it is equal to p of y k plus 1 given x k plus 1 comma y 1 to y k times the integral now of p x k plus 1 given x k pi k of x d x k divided by integral p x y k plus 1 given x k plus 1 comma y 1 till y k integral p x k plus 1 given x k pi k of x k d x k d x k plus 1. Now, you, uh, this is what I have done by cancelling out y, p y 1 to y k you know is, is a little bit uh, uh, has a little bit of mathematical subtlety involved in that. And the reason we had to cancel this out was because we, we actually considered the joint probability here. I, one could have to begin with considered only instead of the joint probability uh, uh, by, uh, by taking uh, of, of x1, xk plus 1, xk and y1 to yk, instead of considering that joint probability one could have con considered a conditional probability itself. So, you could have condition we could have taken in, in this a condition on a yk plus 1 here and a condition on yk plus uh, uh, sorry condition on y1 to yk and condition on y1 to yk here as well and it would uh, the, the, the expression would then go through and no cancellation of p y1 to yk would be then required. These are these two approaches are uh, you know more or less this, uh, more or less the same there are some mathematical subtleties involved, but eventually you should get the the answer that I am uh, that that we are claiming in the theorem. So, this is where we have reached so far we we have we have got this this expression here and if you look back at the expression that we have in the theorem it is it is almost similar to that we have got this integral here we have got this integral we also have the integral outside with respect to x. What we do not have is this term what we do not have is 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 this this term and and likewise this term. So, you know, how, how, how are the terms different? Well, this is y probability of y k plus 1 given x k plus 1, whereas if you see here you have y k plus 1 given x k plus 1 and y 1 to y k. Now, but what is probability of uh, what is this particular probability? We can try to look at this on the side here. So, what is this probability p of y k plus 1? Uh, given x k plus 1 comma y 1 to y k. Well, this is the probability that you will get the next observation as y k plus 1 given that the current state is y k plus 1 sorry x k plus 1 and all the previous states are y 1 to y k. But the probability that you will get the next observation as y k plus 1 depends only on the current state we, we, the, uh, given the current state it uh, is independent of all the previous observation. So, so this here is in fact equal to the term that we are that we need it is probability of y k plus 1 given x k plus 1. Now, the reason this is this uh, we get this equality is because the, we are essentially assuming that the no, the observation noise is observation noise is independent is independent across time across time instance. Right. So, the, the noise that of affects your observations at any time is independent from that which affects uh, your observations at any other at any other time. So, uh, consequently this is this uh, we, we have we basically have this particular uh, we have this particular identity and once you substitute that out here in this in these two terms we will get the filtering uh, the box equation that we have written out here. Okay. So, this, this basically gives us the filtering equation that we, uh, that we desired. Now, this filtering equation can uh, is often written out in, in uh, as in two different steps. The first step is uh, first step is what is called a prediction step. 
So, the prediction step is So, the prediction step involves predicting the next state given the observations so far. So, that is pi k plus 1 given x, x uh, given given k. So, that as a function of x k plus 1 this is really p of x k plus 1 given y 1 to y k not y 1 to y k plus 1. y 1 to y k plus 1 is the thing that we need as far as uh, filtering is concerned. So, this step here is your prediction step and this this is in fact p x k plus 1 given x k times pi k of x k integral d x k right. So, this here is the term that we have in the numerator. So, the let me box this uh, write this here. So, this term here is your is the prediction step right. So, the prediction step is the what we have there and the next step involves what is called a measurement update. So, we can think of filtering is happening in these two steps. So, the measurement update basically it considers the new measurement and using the new measurement updates pi k plus 1 given k to pi k plus 1 that means pi k plus 1 given k pi k given k plus 1. So, you get pi k plus 1 of x k plus 1 using the, the uh, you take the previous previous uh, uh, the previous prediction that we have and then update your uh, your posterior distribution based on the new information that you have received. So, in that sense the the uh, the the, uh, the previous prediction that we have here, the previous prediction here, this can be thought of as a prior. It is as if we have this particular prior distribution on x k plus 1, we then receive a new observation y k plus 1 and then based on that new observation we compute a posterior uh, on x k plus 1 and that posterior is, is this expression pi k plus 1 of x k plus 1. So, this is equal to p of y k plus 1 given x k plus 1 integral pi k plus 1 given k of x k plus 1 divided by the integral of the numerator with respect to x k plus 1 which is So, you can see this here is nothing in is nothing but Bayes rule itself. So, you are a fine you have a, a prior distribution given by this uh, this term that I am circling here and then you have a measurement uh, which is coming in which is uh, dependent on uh, which depends only on the present state and then based on the me present measurement the prior distribution. Uh, you update your 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 distribution about the state use using uh, using Bayes rule. So this is this here is is Bayes rule. Right. So you are update doing this using Bayes rule, and that's really the measurement update state. So you recall that I had mentioned that filtering the filtering equation is really an application of Bayes rule and this is it, it this is uh, being borne out right here uh, because after all we are finding that the first the first step of the fil of filtering is prediction and that prediction is simply uh, is carried out here and that prediction basically gives you the new prior distribution that you want uh, that the prior distribution that you want to work with and then with the new information that comes in the new measurement that has come in which is y k plus 1 you do a measurement update using Bayes rule and the earlier and uh, and the prediction the prior that you have got from the prediction and then based on that you update your uh, update your belief and that is what comes out. So, that is your new posterior then. So, you can think of this as 
a prior and a posterior. All right. So this therefore gives us uh, the way uh, uh, basically a, a this is our filtering equation that. Now what we will now do is we will uh, in the next lecture what we will do is we will actually compute this uh, compute this in closed form for for one extremely popular class of problems which is uh, which is the one where the state evolves as a linear system and the noise is is gaussian and the observations are also linear functions of this linear functions of the state and noise this this results in a specific kind of filter and that filter is what is called the kalman filter so in the next lecture we will look at the kalman filter the in all of these filtering problems including the one uh, the the one that the kalman filter solves all of them involve computing these integrals notice that the computational hardship involved in going from the previous uh, from the previous transition density to the next transition density in other words the computational hardship in computing this this t here is lies in computing these integrals so the genius of the kalman filter is that these integrals here are being computed effortlessly almost you know in in it turns out that when the when we have the system that i just mentioned a lot of these these calculations can be done extremely extremely easily so that's what we will do in the next lecture